Welcome, everybody. It's September 2018, and we're going to have the What's New podcast. I'm Dave Darrington. I will be your host for the podcast series. And today I'm joined by Andrew Quadnitz. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, good to be here. Good to see you again. And again, this is part of the Connector series where we really step aside and talk about the what's new, what's happening, how have we improve the interface, what kind of new goodies do we have to offer to you. So today, we have several, I think these are really big things, Andrew. I'm, I'm actually tremendously excited about how we've gotten new traction on the UI. We've changed it. We made it easier for people. So going to have you talk about that. Then a couple other housekeeping points, new things that I'm also excited about. We are launching Azuqua Academy in beta. So now you have a nice structured program to learn and to figure out how to use Azuqua a lot better, a lot faster. So that's really cool. And then we're going to talk a little bit about our new pricing model, which you should be excited about because it makes it easier for you to get in, build a flow, keep costs down, and have a good time. So let's get into this. Andrew, are you ready? I'm ready. Sounds right. good. Let's rock and roll. So new features. We've got a lot of ground to cover here. And again, like to do this somewhat organically. Andrew, you've been spearheading a lot of this uh, with the team and, and getting things going. So let's start out with, I've got on the screen, and we're going to actually do live demo. I've got the interface up, and I'd like you to talk me through the important changes that we've made that should make your life easier. So where do we want to begin? Okay, well, one subtle change we made is what happens when you click New Flow. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and click I'll that button. I'll go ahead button. and do that. So uh, we used to bring you right into choosing your event, and you'd see like a long list of, of actions, and, and you were one step away from even seeing what the, re what the result is, what a flow is. Totally. So we made it actually just take you right into a flow. So uh, basically a flow has a single event and then as many actions and functions as you need afterwards, this event kicks off the flow and then the actions run. So by taking you right into this, both for uh, experienced users like us mm -hmm. and then for new users, then you could actually start to build the flow the way you want to build it. It also allows us, especially for new users, and we have, people may notice like when you're, when you're using this for the first time, like app queues will pop up that tell you like this is what an event is, this is what an action is. And so we're essentially showing you what the game board is yep. <laughs> when you get started, as opposed to first walking you through, you know, hey, what app are you using or, or explaining these technical concepts. So um, I guess that's a subtle little change, but so far the feedback's been good and we've been happy just dropping you right into this point. And then for a lot of people, you can start just by adding some functions or actions. You might know that you want to do some steps and look up a value and send it to Slack and you don't necessarily know what schedule you're going to run that on and what's going to kick that off. You can choose how you want to start. Totally. I really dig this because as I've been developing training and doing other, doing my own flows, one of the things I really, I thought was not cool for me when I was first starting to develop a flow, that it was forcing me to do one thing or another, like choose an action or choose a schedule. I might not be ready to do that initially. I will be later, but I like this more now because I can come in and say, well, do I want to start it with something? Maybe not right now, but I could. And this takes me right back to that screen that you were talking about. That was original, right? It would, we'd originally drop you there. You'd pick what you wanted and go from there. And now the difference is, well, I don't have to do that. And for me, that's, that's really cool because I can go in and say, well, I'm going to work with Google Sheets. I'm going to select something. And then I can start building out my flow. And I'm unencumbered by having to work on the entry point yet. Correct. And you can choose to name it first or, you know, I mean, basically you choose where you want to start. I like that. And for me, the way I like to work, Andrew, is I like to sketch things out and test things as I go because that makes me feel more comfortable that you know, my flow is going to work correctly once I have it all together. I do it incrementally. And this is great because I don't, I'm not forced into that to start with. Yeah, and it's a lot more standard. And most apps that you use, when you say new document, you get, you get a new document. New spreadsheet, you get a new spreadsheet. New table, you get a new table. So new flow, you get a new flow. flow. And a flow is events and actions. So the first step, especially for people new to the application, is to learn you know the basics of a flow and it is actually pretty simple so better to pop you in here than than immediately say you know oh what application and ask you basically the next level of questions when you really should just go right to the start this is the starting point great this is fabulous so then what's what's next and i think i know where you're going to lead us how else have we really enhanced this user experience well let's click that function button that's a big improvement. Right away, you see that we've got categories along the left side. I see that. They're logically ordered. 
if you remember the old version, I, I guess we could have showed like, you know, before and after. I'll throw a picture after. in for I'll before forget. and after yeah. for sure. But uh, the old version, we had those categories as a first choice right in the middle, and they were in alphabetical order. So uh, we had a category called crypto that, you know, you had to read <laughs> through that before you got to see, you know, text. So now we have logical categories along the side. We have a most popular category. I like that. At the top. You don't even have to click to another screen if you're using the functions that are get the most usage in the product. Right. This also, if you're new to the product, this will give you an idea of what other users tend to use the most. You'll see we've broken up. We had a category called control. Mm -hmm. And we've broken that up into branching and error handling. We had one very experienced user already give feedback. He was really excited about the lookup function that he found under branching and, and congratulated us on that new function that has been in the product been for over forever. been in the product for over a year. <laughs> to me that's a success of the categories in that it's the shorter lists that are easier to browse. So you may discover some new things. And then we did a lot of work. We rewrote almost more than half of those descriptions. That's great. Um, we changed the category names so we don't like the word string is very familiar with programmers. Programmers also know that text is talking about the same thing. But people who are non-programmers now don't have to figure out that a string isn't just something you tie a box with, but it's also a string of characters and, you know, in a, te in a programming language. So here you uh, have We're text. usable by non-programmers. So yeah, so we moved away from terms like string and, you know, complicated. E even like that crypto category I talked about, we renamed that encryption, which is a little more friendly. We had two functions under encryption called cipher and decipher. Sounds and like the matrix. Yeah, now it's, <laughs> now it's just encrypt and decrypt. And actually, if you want to send encrypted messages to a friend who can then decrypt them, there you go. Now you have two easy functions to do that. So now that makes a lot more sense. So you have a category called encryption, and under that encryption, encrypt, decrypt, yeah. hash. These again yeah, those, get a little nerdy, yeah, but... Well, that's why those are all in the bottom, the advanced. Mm -hmm. You know, and really most people want to spend their time up in the top. And then if you look... We renamed, I think it was over 40 functions. We renamed a lot of inputs and outputs as well. So uh, let's, let's take a uh, number, for example. If you scroll down to a bunch that say, you see this round, round, round decimal yeah. places, scroll down a little more and you'll see this round down and round up. Those used to be called round, uh -huh. to fixed, ceiling, and floor. Actually, floor is round down, ceiling is round up. Right, and as a computer scientist, you'd know exactly what that meant. But as a business yeah, I, person, I, got, I I want to round down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I call it ceiling and floor. And and just for the record, I have a computer science degree. But even I, you know, appreciate like like if you go to the true false category, uh -huh. computer scientists call that booleans, and you know all. But when when non programmers or programmers alike are dealing with this. I mean, true-false is a more broad concept that more people will understand. And then we had functions that were called things like NAND and NOR. And as a computer scientist, I'm very familiar with not AND and not OR and how to do Boolean expressions like that. But at the same time, even experienced people, we have to remind ourselves, now, now what was NAND again? <laughs> so, so just saying any false. I mean, so now you just have to say, if I have a whole bunch of true-false conditions and I need to know if any of them are false to make a decision in my flow, I can just use the any false function. So even for programmers, I think this will make things easier. But certainly for non-programmers, it's a lot less intimidating Absolutely. not to see all those programming terms. You know, instead of XOR, it's OR exclusive. That's when you're saying it's this or that, but not both. And there are plenty of times in, you know, when you've got a business process, you're going to have to make decisions using logical expressions like this. Let's go to the text category. And again, you'll see there's a whole bunch under find mm -hmm. that all used to have different names. Now they're all together. So find, find email, find last, find pattern. Let's look at replace. Okay. Uh, there's a few replace too, but let's just choose replace. And you'll see we've also renamed a bunch of the inputs and outputs. Oh, look so in, look for, look replace in, with. These are for, human replace. terms. They exactly. make sense immediately. All instances, case sensitive. It used to be called like string, you know, source, but actually SRC and dest and global and, you know, and, and all these terms that even I, 
you, you know, and anytime you can click that little help button in the bottom left, then it'll open up a help topic. But by renaming a lot of these inputs and outputs, I think we can avoid people having to read the help Absolutely. every time they go to use a function. No, this is really so, good, uh, Andrew. I mean, it's already, I know, I, I hadn't expected that the changes, and suddenly I was working in my own flows the other day um, when it coincided with the release. And I go, oh my gosh, this is great. I was looking for something, I couldn't find it before, but afterwards it made a whole lot more sense. Yeah, and hopefully it won't throw existing users off. We were careful about which things we renamed. I, I create flows all the time, and I find myself really appreciating that all the round <laughs> functions are right together, and I don't have to remember you know, which one I wanted to choose. But if you do remember uh, a specific function, like if you liked the date, from ISO function <laughs> and you wanted to search for that or you wanted to search for ceiling, you could still type, why don't you try typing ceiling or floor okay. into search and you'll see the round oh, up there we go. will come up. So you can still, when you click add function, you can immediately type the function you're looking for and all the existing functions should show up in search results. So here's well, one, I can type ISO. Yeah. Yeah, like well, no one really formats. wants to type ISO, that's a bad <laughs> example. But, but, sure. but if you were used to ceiling or you used to floor or, well, you'd have an extra O Oh, there, I have so. two O's, so that's um, my mistake. So there's floor. Okay, yeah. so that makes and, it easy. Or if you, we renamed string to text, so if you still needed to search for string because it was in the thing, you could still find those things, but. Excellent. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty excited about that in doing, like I said, we updated a lot of descriptions as well. Mm -hmm. So, like the description of XNOR used to be the logical complement of the XOR operation, and now it actually describes what XNOR is. That's a true-false operation that really nobody needs. But, <laughs> but, uh, but for many of them, you know, like even like we've really updated a lot of descriptions for things. So hopefully it will make it easier as you're browsing through this to know which things to choose. And then the help topics, you know, we have to go through and, and update all the help topics to, um, to include the new input and output names and the new function names. And, and in doing so, while we were doing that, we also made a pass at rewriting a lot of the help topics. And so, so in general, function help and everything about functions is, has been improved. We got some feedback and we're already making a few tweaks that will go live in our next release. Tell but me but how... I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Tell me how, Andrew, that, okay, so I'm using this, and I mean, I applaud you and the team for doing all these changes, because this is massive. One of the biggest hangups that I've had in the past is I kind of know these terms and I can bumble my way into a success, but we don't want everybody to experience that. But let's say I'm still kind of confused at something, or I'm looking, and again, it's really important to note, help is always there. If the help is not there, there are ways to submit a message to us, and we're going to go and actively start to close those gaps we have been closing those gaps. How would I go about submitting information if something, a card wasn't quite right or I found something that, that I was confused by? Yeah, and we do look at feedback regularly. And if you, like for instance, at the bottom of that replace article, if you scroll down, you'll see there is a, was this helpful? Oh, okay. And anytime you can click no and tell us what was wrong or what was missing, and that goes, that goes right to me. Oh, it's right, right here in the, the app. Team. How could we improve it? How could and we then improve I get it? a text field. Exactly. Say, this is great. But otherwise, uh, we would use flows to look at this information and prioritize and get. We, this we stuff do next. have flows actually. That when <laughs> someone submits this, we actually do have a flow that automatically sends it to a feedback Slack channel that a bunch of us are on, and then we talk about these. And we're working on more flows to make it so that we can actually just create Jira incidents or Jira things that we assign directly to owners based on what the feedback was on. So yeah, it's it's uh, we use flows for all kinds of things internally. This is great. Uh, so so now you know. Hey, use your use the help. You know how to submit some comments, some feedback to us. Again, we're actively looking at that feedback at all levels to make this product what you want to use. So go ahead and check this out. Andrew, any more about the interface stuff that you want to bring our attention to? Yeah, that's the, I think we covered, covered a bunch. Fabulous. We definitely are always working in the background on additional things. So, uh, you know, this is just a step towards uh, making it easier. And I look forward to having more things to announce in the future. I am too. So this is great. Um, Andrew, let's, let's kind of go through the next steps. In addition to this, and this was the big bulk of what we really wanted to get out there. And it's not just for everybody who's listening too. this helps us as well. And this helps everybody that's using the product. So thank you so much for putting the effort into this. This is wonderful. Yeah, I should add one other thing too. If you close that help pane, 
we showed how to get feedback specifically on a function. Specific, yeah. You know, through the help. But um, you can also at any time click that help icon there and leave oh, feedback. Oh, leave feedback right is here. It's also right on that menu too. So um, you could give us feedback about anything in the product. It goes to the same place. And, and we have our community. People mm -hmm. sometimes post questions there. And, so let's, and we let's post show questions that. there too. So community.azuko.com. Yeah, I'm and glad you can you also find up. it from the link right in the help menu too. And you'll even see, like, I, I posted something to the community letting them know about the input and output renamings and the function renaming and asked for some feedback. One of our community members suggested something that went right into the product because I liked the suggestion and we, we bounced it off some other users and people liked it. So we, we implemented it actually exactly as you suggested it. So Oh, wow. So, hey, that's another tip. If something, you got a good idea, send it. Our product team will take a look at it and... Again, you're looking at the community right now. That's community.azuka.com. But again, as Andrew said, you could go straight to the question mark button up here on the top right and click leave feedback. Or visit or the visit, I'm sorry. Click visit the community and you go straight to it. So you don't have to remember anything. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit. I don't have anything to show you on this, but I did want to break and say... We've also added a couple new connectors since, since the last release, and we've updated a tremendous number of them. The new connectors are ECMS and Coupa, C-O-U-P-A. The updated connectors, I'll show them on the screen. I'll link you to them, but I'm not going to go through all of them, but I see there's probably at least 20 of them here on the list that will offer probably better performance, perhaps same in the same vein as you've been doing with the user interface, making some of the terminology, some of the words, some of the things in those cards, in those connectors make more sense, right? Yeah, we're constantly updating connectors based on, we get connector feedback from a lot of different channels, but Absolutely. Um, our connector team's always hard at work. <laughs> All right. So... We're getting close to the end here. The next thing, and, and again, I'm super excited about this, folks. If you've heard me before, you do know that I'm the director of user enablement, meaning, hey, I'm trying to help you out, get you up to speed as quickly as possible. Can't do that without a great UI, but we also can't do that without training. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Azuqua, particularly about different functions, maybe best practices, and again, some of these may need to be updated now that we've got the great new UI, Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, no problem. I love it. You're all smart folks. So as you're reading through this or you're watching videos, you'll get it really quick. But I just want to direct your attention to the learn.azuko.com slash academy page. This is going to be and is now the landing page for all of our training and enablement stuff. You'll start seeing tracks now. If you're familiar with many other softwares that you use, you know, Hey, there's a training course, a training syllabus. We've designed this a little bit differently. You will notice there's no login here. So that means, hey, I don't have to remember another username password. I can go hunt and find what I want. We're going to be advancing this all the time, just like we do with the UI. I'm going to go back and resurface a lot of this, make it easier for you to use. But right now, you can see that there's the fundamentals. This is a really good sequence, the 100 series, for you as you're really learning how to use the product. Again, go ahead and feel free, jump in, learn, use the help in product, use app cues. So that tells you some of the basic things, but you wanna get deeper, you wanna go further, do the 100 series. That um, starts off with a Zuko 101, goes all the way through testing cards and everything in between. Pretty easy content. A lot of these are small. The first ones are you know, 20, 30 minutes. But once you get into actions and events all the way down, it's like five. We are starting to track all this. All you need to do is if you go into one of these and I'll click on one of them just to show you, the layout, and again, just like Andrew showed us with providing feedback, there's also a Google form that we will accept feedback for anything you find in here. This is very beta, meaning you're going to find inconsistencies, perhaps misspellings. We're working to get this out first, and that's the way I prefer. But you'll note now you have the video. You can maximize this to watch it. Everything that's in the video is also listed all the way down the page. These are not everything, but the important and key critical material. So if you don't like to watch and you'd like to read, by all means, go ahead and do that. And then you'll notice we have added a quiz and a workbook, right? The workbook, same kind of format, but you could print this out and sit down and work through some examples and learn. And then if you go to the quiz, and this is pretty simple. And what I'd ask of you is if you want to do track your performance, use your work email or whatever consistent email that you're going to use all the way through. And at some point in the near future, we'll have a dashboard to see where you're at. And we'll get to badging and certification down the road. But that's our first look. Go there, check it out. It'll get better every day. 
and there will be more coming. You can see we have the 200 level coming or completing probably within a few weeks, and then we'll start adding more. That's it on that last topic. And Andrew, I think you can provide us some feedback on this. We have some new pricing. Very exciting. I'll take you to the pricing page. Uh, again, you can hit this from our homepage, and this is azuka.com slash azuka dash pricing. Now, a um, big update here, I think, is the individual one, right? But there's probably more all the way through. Yeah, we want, well, we want to lower the barrier to entry so uh, more people could try out a single flow and get started because we're pretty confident once you actually start using flows and realize the time you can save and how much it improves your, the process at work that you'll want to do it more. So we have a, a single flow plan mm -hmm. as the entry level. And it's very easy just from within the product just to add more flows. So if you need more flows, so it's the fifty dollars an additional you. flow. Fifty dollars per additional flow, and um, we also made it so that when you buy an additional flow, you get an additional table. Most of the existing plans have that as well. So here are the so, features. Um, this is the features page. So showing the yes. individual plan, it would be an individual. Is, of course, just you, one person. Yes. You, have ex you do have execution history, you have all the stuff that we'd normally do, some processing, file sizes, and then you have a table. So you'd get an additional table then. Yes. Yeah, actually in our, in our beginner plan, our old basic plan, we did not include tables in the past. Just having a built-in table in the product that you can use, many of the flows I write, write data to a table. Mm -hmm. So it's really handy having it. It's, it's fast and easy. So we decided to make that part of what you get for each flow you buy moving forward. Any other changes to the rest of them? I know we have team, enterprise, and SaaS. And these more get into perhaps with the team model because it's in, I think, the $550 monthly price range. Still credit cardable, yeah. right? And now we've just made it easier. And what I really love about this, Andrew, is that you know I have a number of friends out there that say, hey, I'd really like to try this out. Okay, again, I have to remind you, three free trial, right? 30 days, you can get into the product. Right up here at the top of the screen, you see a try now button. Click it, start it, go through some training, try some stuff out. We have in-product training that can start stepping you through to build a flow. It's not hard. It's a great interface. But go ahead and do that. Whether you think you're going to buy or not, go in there and check it out. See the power behind the product. And the, and the free trial includes a lot more features. So the free trial comes with, I believe it's 12 flows that you, could, that you can use and play around with. So you can right. certainly try out a lot more during your trial period. You can also, if you do want to consider a multi-user plan, you can try inviting another user and mm -hmm. see um, all the collaboration features that we have. Because you really can build flows together with other people. So if uh, you each are in charge of different SaaS apps in your company, and right. uh, you can each contribute your pieces to the to the workflow. Yeah, we have a lot of people coming in and using trials. We we have a better experience now where we're prompting you with more learning tips. Mm -hmm. The interface changes. We reach out to trial users too. If you need if you need help, we're certainly here to help get you started. Absolutely. Yeah, I really like that. We have Paul on our team that commonly responds to a number of, uh, of your questions. So if you're in a trial and you're really struggling with something or you have a question, you can commonly get to him and help you out. Plus, we have a lot more. So this is stellar. Again, if you're, if you're on the fence, go get that free trial. Start an individual plan thereafter. You can see down below here on the page two, I believe we offer two months free if you pay for an annual plan. So that's not really a whole lot of money. And I did have one question for you, though. So let's say I'm in my free trial, right? And you say I can have a number of flows there, but I have one in my individual plan. Does that mean one active flow? So if I had my trial and I wanted to activate it, I just have to turn some of them off, but I could leave them there? Uh, correct. Yeah. Actually, gotcha. the, the, the flow limit is based on active flows at the time. And once you get into your advanced topics, and we have something called child flows, uh, and these are flows that are essentially helper flows. Like if you have like a shared set of steps that, that you have multiple flows that need to do those set of steps. Or if you want to process all the elements in the list, what you can do is you can use a flow that you send each element of the list one at a time to and the flow that the child flow does the work. Those child flows do not count against your limit. So if you have, uh, you know, one flow that's you know checking for new support tickets in Zendesk, it can use child flows to process those tickets. So let me see if I can give you an example of this while we're, while we're here. 
So I have flows for the academy, and I have a number of them that are child flows. So if I show you one of these, let's look at 105, you can see that this is a child flow. So it's expecting parameters that come in or information that comes in as I'm looping through Correct. a list. And then, so this would be included. Yes. And there, uh, I don't know if you already talked about the new note feature in a previous episode, but we that's have. also a relatively new feature that's been around for just a couple months, and we're pretty excited about that. And you can see I have two of them in this one flow. I use them for my flow documentation so that, well, I tend to forget what I've I, done in the past. <laughs> so I, I, use, love I use them all the time. The nice <laughs> thing, too, a, a little known, I mean, there's a little, again, we love just putting little links to help throughout the product. So you can see the little question mark there. You can always look up. You can also actually use Markdown, and you can actually put some rich text in there, even, even pictures and links. So I can uh, use like dashes and uh, for um, for things like that and go all the way through. Is that noted in the help? Yes, and you see it created. Oh, I can see that right bullets. here. So oh, it created my bullets. So as soon as I did that, let's do this. So let's. If you're not familiar with Markdown, it's kind of like web formatting HTML, but a little bit easier to use. Yeah. Oh, see, so I just highlighted like that. That's and then you're, super you're cool. You could see uh, my bad sense of humor there. There's a link if you want to go to Disneyland. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. Cool. Oh, and, and you've actually included this as well. Uh, common markdown options. There's a list of that. Yeah. Again, that's all in the help. Cool. Yeah, I gave a few examples and then just put a link to read more. And we just use a standard markdown library to, to display that. I love this. This this makes it so much better, so much easier. Again, best practice for us is in programming, always document, always comment. Unless, you know, you're well, you know, renegade, fine. I don't trust myself. I'm going to come back to something and I'm going to look at it again and say, what was this all about? What am I thinking here? And you can put uh, probably as many note cards as you need to exactly. with in line. They don't count towards execution time, right? They're just static there to help you out. All right, Andrew, I think we're at the end here. We're Let's go ahead and wrap up. Again, thanks for jumping in, Andrew. And we actually did some live demo today. This is great. You can see all these new features. If you haven't seen them yet, if it's been a while since your flows are running in the background, pop into the interface, start making some new ones, have a good time with it. You'll really appreciate the changes that we've got there. As usual, I will create some links and I'll attach them here and direct you to all the pages and other assets that you'll need to get going. And as always, please visit www.azuqua.com. You can get all the details, learn about new things we've got out there and more. And for a demo, again, go up to the main landing page and click start a free trial and you can get a 30 day free trial for that. So there's no friction. You've got a lot of help. Get in there and start making some flows. So that brings us to the end of What's New. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Happy flow building to everybody. All right. And to all you listeners out there, once again, thanks for joining us and get out there and make some connections.